Okay, so now we're on to what is a pretty chunky section of the GMAT, uh, which I basically just group into word problems. Um, to be honest, maybe half of all questions are um, extremely easy mathematically, just made difficult in the GMAT by them throwing a paragraph at you and just asking you to figure out what on earth they're saying. Um, and so word problems come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, um, but the ones that they throw most often at you um, fall into the category of distance, time, work rate, ratios and mixtures. Um, and then there's other types, but the method overall is going to be the same. Um, I'll give you a few sort of general tips for uh, specific types of questions here. Um, but overall, uh, for every single word problem, all I want you to keep in mind is that your main goal is just translate. Do not worry about answering the question until you've translated. And what I mean by translating is you want a set of simultaneous equations. Because as soon as you've um, translated into a bunch of simultaneous equations, you can just ignore the words and just solve those. And that's actually, you know, you know how to do that. That's nice and easy. Um, and so the actual difficult part of the word problem is just the translation part, uh, which the only way I can sort of show you how to do that is through examples. So you'll see a lot of examples in the next questions, um, but uh, in the next example video of questions. Um, but just remember that that's what we have in mind, because word problems can be very intimidating. And if you just spend your time reading through them, you're just going to waste a bunch of time. So instead of trying to just read through them, understand what's going on, just go sentence by sentence. And your only goal is to get an, um, an equation out of each sentence. And then if you assume you've got that right, then you just solve them. Um, so that's the overall goal. So distance, speed and time questions. The main thing that I recommend is that you draw diagrams um, and you sort of work in distances uh, and use v equals distance over time or time equals uh, distance of velocity etc religiously and but what I mean by that is uh, just make sure you've got an idea of what's going on by using a diagram so for example if you've got um, they tell you you've got two trains leaving a station and going towards each other um, and one train is at uh, speed VA and the other train is at speed VB. Well, then just, um, and they tell you one train travels for an hour. Well, I can label onto this diagram that this guy has gone a distance uh, of VA because uh, VA times one hour uh, is just a distance um, of VA. And then if VB has been traveling for half an hour, then I can label on, and they meet, let's say, I know that they're there and I can label on this distance of VB over two. And so you immediately sort of get an idea of what's going on. Um, similarly, if you're told someone uh, walks to school at speed, um, speed five, and then walks back at speed uh, three, and they want to know what the uh, average speed is, for example, well, just draw a, dis draw a diagram, uh, label on a distance. Don't be afraid to sort of, um, you know, uh, create variables for yourself. So that's D. And then just sort of ask yourself, well, okay, what can we start working out? Well, we can say time one is uh, D over five. Time two is D over three. Uh, and then what's um, time average? Well, that's just uh, how sorry, not time average, uh, V average. Well, that must be um, equal to the total distance divided by the total time. In other words, uh, 2D divided by, well, the total time is going to be D over 5 plus D over 3. D cancels out. And so we just have 2 over 1 over 5 plus 1 over 3, uh, which we can sort of start working out, I suppose, if we multiply top and bottom by 15, we get to uh, 30 over uh, 8, and so that will be um, 15 over 4. So the point being that I'm just sort of, there. all the questions are going to be the same, and it's just about sort of drawing a diagram and sort of not being afraid to label on unknown distances d or unknown speeds v, etc. Then we've got um, the idea of relative velocity problems. 
And these can be solved extremely easily just by uh, remembering that, let's say um, we have a car uh, going this way um, at speed 80, and we've got another car going this way at speed 60, and they start off, uh, let's say, 20, um, 20 miles apart or something. Uh, and the question is um, something like, how long until, let's call this A, let's call this B, until B is 10 miles ahead of A, question mark. And so all you need to do in relative velocity problems is realize that we don't care about the overall distance that they're actually traveling. All we do, all we care about is the relative velocity. So in other words, uh, B, uh, and wow, the, this this question is, let's, uh, let's actually say this is 100, because otherwise this isn't going to work. Um, B is gaining on A at a rate of 20, because 80, uh, 100 minus 80 is 20. And so then how long until B is 10 miles ahead of A? Well, he needs to travel 30 miles further than A. So in other words, all we need to do is say 30 over 20. And that equals 1.5 hours. So in this re in relative velocity problems, and we'll do more of these, all you need to do is sort of consider uh, the difference in speeds and stuff like that. Um, okay, work rate problems. Uh, these are very popular um, in the GMAT. Just make sure you only try and uh, set up algebra and then solve it. So for example, if I'm told uh, we have machine A can do a job uh, in uh, 10 hours. So A can do a job in 10 hours. What you want to get very used to doing is saying that that means that the work rate of A is 1 over 10, e.g. every hour he can do a tenth of a job. Uh, B can do a job in five hours. So B equals one over five, where B is the work rate of B. And so they ask, and then they ask um, together, how long does it take? So then your question becomes um, effectively, uh, what is A plus B question mark? And so we just do that which is going to end up being, um, what, 3 over 10. And then putting that in the same form, that's 1 over 10 over 3. So the answer will just be 10 over 3. Okay, and you'll see a lot more examples of that um, in uh, the example video, but just make sure you, you get used to using algebra and using rates. Um, sometimes uh, in work rate problems, once you've fully translate and set up the equations, um, the the algebra can get very, very bad. So for example, um, if uh, A takes time T to do a job, so A is 1 over T, B takes um, uh, 1 hour longer so b equals 1 over t plus 1 um you know and, and then it's some, something to do with uh, them together uh well together we're going to have uh 1 over t plus 1 over t plus 1 and then then maybe you know we want to know how long it takes them to do uh how, how long does it take so you know some new time to do one um, and effectively, what you can see here is the algebra is going to get pretty nasty pretty quickly. And so you still want to do the same thing. You still want to set up the equations like this. But then instead of solving the algebra, if, if it really does seem like it's just out of hand and too hard, just have it take a guess. Looking at the answers, you should have some idea of how, you know, how long it's going to take. It's clearly going to take less time than uh, one of them on their own, etc. Um, and so have a look at the answers and pick one that you think is correct. Um, and just sub it in and see if it all works out. And if it does, you know that's the right answer. And if it doesn't, uh, depending on what's happened, whether it's too big or too small, you can sort of know which direction you're picking 
uh, direction you're going in terms of picking the next answer. So again, these kind of uh, concepts are best shown in examples. So this is just to sort of t explain what I'm going to be doing in the examples video. But just remember that your goal is just to set up the algebra. That's all your goal is. And then if you can solve the algebra, just do it. That's great. If you can't, because it's just too nasty and you know it will take too long, then you can start using cheat methods to sort of sub in answers. Um, there's a few tricks as well to mention. So, for example, a very common question is about how long it will take pumps to um, fill a tank or something if they're working together. And so let's say we know uh, A fills a tank in 30 minutes, 30 minutes. B uh, does the same thing in 20 minutes. Uh, C does the same thing in 15 minutes. Uh, and D uh, empties uh, in uh, 10 minutes. So D is actually a negative um, uh, uh, sort of a, a drainage system. So, and then they ask um, how long altogether to fill the tank. And so it's it's not, you know, it's not impossible to do algebraically. You know, you just need to say, uh, well, it's going to be uh, A is 1 over, well, let's do it in terms of hours. So A is 1 over 2, uh, B is 1 over 3, uh, C is 1 over 4. No, I'm incorrect here. Already made a mistake there. So A is actually 2 every... Uh, uh, yeah, no, okay, let's fine. Let's, uh, uh, let's do it in, uh, in minutes. A is 1 over 30, B is 1 over 20. Uh, C is 1 over 15, and D is minus 1 over 10, because it's emptying. And so you can sort of, you can see that you could add them all up uh, and get an answer that way, except algebraically that can get very nasty. Um, with this example, it's not too bad, but let's say I made A 36, you know, then you're in a, in a bit of trouble, like just sort of adding them up. It's, it's just going to take a long time. So I just want to go over a quick trick that I like to do here. Um, just take a look at the, the times and just ask yourself, and this often works on work rate problems, so it's not always applicable, but if you spot a question where this is applicable, it's often an incredibly easy way to do it. Um, just have a look at the, the times and just say, okay, well, what's, a, what's the lowest common multiple of all the times? And here we can see it's 60 minutes. So then just ask yourself, in 60 mins, uh, what has happened? And what I mean by that is, okay, so how many times has A filled the tank? Well, A has filled the tank twice. How many times has B filled the tank? Three times. How many times has C filled the tank? Four times. How many times has D emptied the tam tank? Six times. And so in 60 minutes, we've got uh, five, nine, three. And so in 60 minutes, we've got three full tanks. So obviously, to get one full tank, it's 20 minutes. So you can see sort of, you know, nice time-saving methods that avoid all this horrible algebra are sometimes applicable. Again, I'll you'll see sort of how to know which one to use in the example video. I'll do a lot of examples. Okay. And then the next type of word problem that is, uh, I mean, to be honest, I personally think this, this trick makes these incredibly simple, which is the ratios and mixtures number line trick. And this just makes these, these questions, it just sort of demolishes them. Um, we have mixture A is 30% concentrated or something. Mixture B is 50% uh, concentrated. Combined, we get 35% um, concentration. Uh, what is the ratio of A to the mixture? This kind of question. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, but this, this trick, uh, as far as I'm aware, works every time. So all I do is I just draw it sort of graphically. So we've got 30 here, 50 here. What's the distance between them? Well, it's 20. 
uh, where are where do we end up? We end up at 35. How far along is that? That's five. So in other words, we are uh, we've got uh, we're one quarter of the way along there and three quarters from there. And so the answer is actually going to be uh, one to three. Just literally just sort of ask yourself, how far along are we um, in terms of fractions? And then the answer will just be the numerator of those distances. Um, and then which one is the one with more? Well, it's it's the one that we're sort of biased towards. Hopefully it's relatively obvious. We must have more of A than we do of B because we're at 35%. So in other words, we have three times as much A as B. Um, you can get very, very fast with that kind of question using this trick. So uh, again, you'll see the examples in the video. Um, just sort of a quick video here to show you what tricks I'm going to be using. Obviously, um, make sure you understand all of that and sort of get an idea of what I'm talking about. And then the example video should make it a lot clearer.